Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you all for joining us today to learn more about being a Carleton FPA student. To help you give some insight into all of this, we have six students uh, who will talk to you with you about their experiences. First, I would like to introduce Madison, who's a fourth year student in the Bachelor of Global and International Studies with a specialization in global inequalities and social change and a minor in women's and gender studies. Madison has started a new job working with Senator Mobina Jaffer this summer. Ida, a third year student, is also in the Bachelor of International Studies, but with a specialization in global development. Ida plans to complete her international experience requirement by going on, on exchange to India for a semester. Q, is a third year student in the Bachelor of Public Affairs and Policy Management and is currently Vice President Finance of the Arthur Kruger College Educational Student Society. Lisa is a third year uh, student in European and Russian Studies who had an internship with the Montreal Police Service and received a Merit Award for participation. Joining Lisa is Vera, a fourth year student in European and Russian studies. Vera worked together with the director of the Canada Eurasia Russia Business Association in facilitating and providing the research for the entry of a Siberian company in the Canadian market. Unfortunately, Austin, Austin Pelitzer will, won't be joining us in person today, but Lisa will be showing a video of his experiences for you. Austin is also a fourth year student in European and Russian studies. And now enough from me and I will turn it over to Madison. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dean. Um, so I just wanna begin by uh, acknowledging that today is Prisoner Justice Day. Uh, and that's really important, especially during COVID when people have been locked down for days, weeks and months on end, uh, men, women and children. So I just wanted to open with that. So I was asked to say um, something that I found interesting in first year. I think there's a lot. I think anyone who does Begins, which is the Global International Studies program, talks about Candace Sobers, the professor of global history, as really being emblematic um, and hugely symbolic of what our, our studies encapsulate. Um, we learn about that, you know, Europe is not the center of civilization as we're taught. We learn about other religious discourses such as Islam um, and Judaism, for instance. And uh, we also really learn to critically engage, which is something I would say Carleton is really good at teaching its students, is to not just believe what you're being told and to challenge who it is that wants you to believe what you're reading, what you're hearing, um, and who does it benefit for you to believe that. And so to just really be critical. Um, in terms of what I do for extracurricular, just to humanize us a little bit, because we're just not that much older than you guys, uh, especially during COVID, I've had to kind of rebuild my entire routine and life. I was supposed to be in Ethiopia this summer. Obviously that didn't work out. Supposed to be going to South Africa in January. That won't work out. Um, but that doesn't mean we can't still do things that make us happy and, and uh, fulfilled. So for instance, I love sports. I like playing hockey and when it's the winter and shinny. Uh, I enjoy playing rugby, snowboarding, hiking. I've started working out with my family, which has been a fun new dynamic uh, every morning. So that's been good. And uh, in terms of what I wish I knew, I think the opportunities beginning uh, that, that Carleton can afford you, you really, there's a lot of bursaries for doing international internships um, and uh, semesters abroad. So really don't let finance necessarily be a huge limitation. Do reach out to administration. They do really want to see you succeed and they will try and provide you with the resources to do so. Um, and it just really is huge for exposure and uh, expanding your thinking. I also wish I hadn't had so much um, emphasis on my schooling in high school. I, I took a class where sociology, anthropology, um, and psychology were all one, one course, and I left that class having no clue what any of them meant. I now major in essentially a sociology stream. So I think if you have any interests in classes and you don't feel you, they were really fulfilled in high school, still take the courses. Um, and in fact, reach out to your professors because they do really want to see you learn. They want to see you succeed. And I think one of the biggest things I've heard from my fellow 
uh, cohort and students is, you know, they're often really intimidating. The minute you talk to them, they're the most supportive. And I think sometimes high school teachers will tell you these like horror stories of they don't care, they're gonna rush through everything. They're not, they're genuinely there to support you. They're genuinely there to see you succeed. And they're some of the most supportive um, and amazing resources as well. So yeah, I, I really look forward to hearing your guys' questions and I wish you all the best in your future studies. Okay, um, I'm gonna follow up um, on Madison's end. Uh, she set the bar really high, so that was fantastic. Lots of great points in that. Um, so I'm also in vegans. Um, I'm specializing in global development. Um, just in terms, we kind of have the same talking points, but I'll just go a little bit of a different direction. Um, so the biggest point of interest I learned in first year is just your degree at this point is exactly what you want to make it. You pick what you want to study, you pick what you want to specialize in, you pick what you want to minor in. So it's entirely customizable almost. Um, vegans, just for example, we have 17 specializations and that's not including the plethora of minors you can also add on to that. Um, so definitely like follow your interests. Um, you don't always have to necessarily be thinking about the career goal in the end. Um, a lot of the times that'll build up in shape as you continue your studies and follow, follow your passions and what interests you. Um, so that's my biggest point of interest and takeaway from first year is just like the possibilities. The possibilities are entirely endless. You can make your degree, your education, your time in university exactly what you wanna make it. Um, just shifting a little bit um, away from academia, talking about some extracurriculars, um, tons and tons, again, exactly what you want to find, um, what clubs, what communities you want to pursue, everything is there. Um, I was a little hesitant in first year um, making those connection, connections, pardon me, and reaching out. Um, I think that's the biggest thing I learned through first year is that's what's important. Find those extracurriculars, find those clubs, find those sports, find those communities, reach out. You, it's going to enhance your, your time in university. It's gonna enhance your perception of Carleton. Um, it's gonna enhance your education because you're gonna be learning and meeting so many incredible new people. Um, there's so many extracurriculars, anything from sports. Um, if you wanna work with exchange students that are coming to Carleton, there's similar things like that. There's volunteering with your faculty. So what we're all doing today with FPA, that's an extracurricular. Um, there's tons, I don't necessarily want to push my favorite on you. Everyone's gonna have their own preferences, but definitely find something that's uniquely you, something that lights that fire in you. Um, it'll be a great balance between the academics and the attending class and writing those essays and then being able to kick back, have a great time, make those friends. Um, so I definitely encourage that, find something. Um, I know they always do, I don't know exactly how this is gonna work, but they always did like a club's day in a field house where everyone kind of did their own showcase. Um, go to that, ask questions, find what's out there, try something new. Um, that's my biggest point there. Um, and the biggest thing I think I wish I knew going into university is everyone's in the same boat more or less. Um, other people will be putting on this like persona. They know what they're doing. They got this. They're not nervous at all, but everybody's here for the first time. Nobody's done university before. Um, if you're living on res, this is the first time some people have been living on res. I was pretty nervous going into university. I'm a, a first generation university student, like in my family. Um, so I didn't really have like siblings or my parents to like back onto and be like, am I doing okay? Like, is this what's supposed to be going on? But find those friends, um, find those colleagues, those peers. Um, you can talk to TAs and professors. Everybody's here to help you and see you succeed and be successful. Um, so just, just know other people are in the same boat as you and there's nothing to be nervous about. Honestly, sometimes I feel, I was on res, um, and sometimes I felt like it was like the blind leading the blind. We're like, I don't know, what are midterms? I don't know, but that's part of the fun. You'll figure it out. You'll have a great time, honestly. Um, so that's just it for me. I'm gonna pass it on to Q. Um, again, I'll be available at the end for some question and answers. So I look forward to hearing from all of you guys and all the best once we uh, kick off the semester in September. Hi everyone, my name is Q. Uh, before I begin, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the Algonquin Nation whose traditional unceded territory we're gathered to find today. Um, so speaking about myself in the Bachelor of Public Affairs and Policy Management program, I'm also doing a minor in law. And the thing that I wish I knew in first year is, um, like Ada said, is not to be afraid that everyone's in the same boat as you. And, you know, you got to put yourself out there and just be comfortable with who you are. And like, 
I was a little scared going to different meetings and different events, and especially the Club Expo was a, was a scary place for me. But I know this year they're doing it online through like the Carlton Club Expo online situation. So that's going to be a great opportunity. I really encourage everyone to go through the online Club Expo and watch the videos and watch the, like look at the pictures of all the different clubs and activities and teams around Carlton. Um, so something related to my program that I found particularly interesting. Um, I know we have Mark Henvelt here, who is a PAPM Associated Professor and Dean. And especially taking classes with Mark Henvelt, I realized that uh, it's, you shouldn't overcomplicate yourself. Or you shouldn't put too much stress on yourself. I came to university thinking that I needed to be this person. I needed to like use big fancy words and have a dictionary and thesaurus with me at all times. But then I slowly start to realize that it's okay to be simple. It's okay to just, you know, write as you would. It's okay to just take things step at a time and think, take things slowly. No one's trying to kick you out of university. You're going to make your way through it. And it's just an easier process that way once you learn that. Um, so some of the extracurricular activities that I found really cool at Carlton. Um, so I currently, you know, sitting in the vice president of finance for the Papam Student Society. So I encourage everyone to like get involved with your student society that represents your program. There are people who go through the same things as you, take the same classes as you, you know, knowing the same professors as you. Um, I also encourage everyone to do stuff like Model UN, which is really cool at Carlton and well known, or the Moot Society. Um, Carlton Young Liberals, the Carlton Young Conservative. There's a lot of cool political aspects around Carlton. You got to use that capital advantage to your knowledge. I look forward to answering any questions anyone has. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Lisa. Uh, I'm actually the president of the European Russian Studies, and I'm doing a double major uh, in political science and European Russian Studies with a concentration in international relations. And as a first year, I didn't know you could do a double major. I didn't know uh, so many things and I kind of just like Ada said I kind of like built my degree in a way like I kind of put everything together to what were my preferences what I liked and honestly I love it more than anything and I'm so grateful for everything at Carlton and I I would say one of the extracurricular sorry activities um that I would highly suggest that I didn't do during my first year would be joining a club because then you meet you meet people you meet people who are like everyone said in the same boat as you and you can relate on so many things and then you make friends basically for life, you know? And these are connections that you, you use, whether they're, they're networking connections or friend connections, they're gonna outlast your university experience, which is amazing. Um, and I'd also like to congratulate you all on your first year, starting your first year. So it's, it's a big accomplishment. Um, I'd also like to say that the faculty and the student body are always there for you. And no matter what, you can always reach out to counselors, you can always reach out to, to professors, to TAs, to anyone, uh, even fellow students are always gonna be there for you. And especially if you have like some difficulties in certain classes, you can use PASS, um, you could use peer tutoring, you could use writing services and much more. They're on the library uh, websites. Um, I would highly recommend them. I personally use it for economics, which for me was kind of tough. Um, and it really helped me with, uh, I found out, and again, I found out only um, at the end, almost like towards the end of the semester. And it really helped me, especially during um, the last kind of summative. I, I, it was my best one. So I was like, oh my gosh, this really helped me a lot. So I would highly, highly recommend it. Um, I would also recommend uh, looking at what your faculty has to offer because each faculty, like the, for example, URS faculty offers uh, an interesting array of events such as prominent guest speakers, embassy events, social events, alumni events. That's where I learned about FSWEP. That's where I learned about international uh, internships, internships and how regular internships and how they help you and build you and, and give you experience that you could actually use when you, when you go to the workforce and be like, hey, I did this, 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 this during my university. Um, during my university experience. So uh, I, finally, I'd like to say that like, just get engaged as much as possible. And uh, like currently I'm, I'm, um, I'm a, research, a research partner with the SAPP program at Carleton and I would highly recommend it. You could do it during the fall, during the summer, during the winter term, and you get to co-build a class with a professor, which I would highly recommend. It's very interesting, so yeah. All the best. I wish, uh, I hope to see you guys in the hallways once this COVID thing's over. And going off what Lisa said about internships and everything, um, 
yours has a really good event that they host every year. It's a career night. So you get to meet your alumni that you can talk to and they can tell you more about places where you can work using your degree. Uh, it's actually how I found out about Serba, where I internship for international business development. Um, some extracurriculars that I like to do. Uh, there's a lot of public lectures hosted by URIS, really helped expand your knowledge of topics that might interest you. Um, it also is a really good opportunity for networking, meeting new people, give you a good idea of something that you want to focus on in your studies or what you want to do. Um, I'm also in the URIS society, like Lisa. So it's a really good idea to join societies or clubs, gives you a really good opportunity to meet new people um, and make it easier for you to go through your first few years at university, which could be pretty hard for some people. And really the only thing that I wish I knew in first year was how easy it is to talk to your professors if you're having trouble or if you need more time on an assignment. They're always willing to talk to you, they're always willing to help you. Um, and yeah, good, good luck guys with your first year. All right, thank you to all of our ambassadors for sharing. Um, as uh, Dee Andre mentioned, Austin, one of the ambassadors, was unable to make it today, but Lisa will be sharing her screen uh, to show Austin's video of his experiences. So it's just for you to listen to, uh, enjoy, learn from. Obviously, he can't answer any questions during the Q&A, but after the video, uh, we will open the Q&A. So feel free to write your questions in the chat uh, to unmute your mics and ask. Um, please don't interrupt anybody or talk over anybody. Uh, we'll just work with the flow of it. And uh, feel free to address all or single out one of our ambassadors. Hi everybody, my name is Austin Pelzer. I am a fourth year URIS undergraduate student at Carleton University. My experience with URIS has been nothing but amazing opportunities, success, and great eye-opening experiences. Um, the department as a whole has been, is and has been super supportive of everything I have done. The amazing courses that are taught in URIS are so diverse and so different than any other wide range of different um, topics of interest, such as economics, policy, European history, and so on and so forth. Um, I couldn't recommend URIS enough. I mean, it's such a great dynamic um, community. And because the department is pretty small, you get that feeling of set and sense of family and friendship with everybody, especially the faculty who are one of probably the top in the university. Um, I can't rave enough about um, how amazing the programs are, whether it's um, economics that talks about the European integration or just Soviet history. There's so many different aspects of what URIS is and could be for you. It is an amazing way to understand the concept and the ideas that Europe as a whole is. And it's a way for you to not only network, but also grow your career academically and professionally. So I could not, um, I could not recommend URIS enough for everyone planning to take it. I'd also like to add, as knowing Austin personally, um, he did an internship with the, with the UN, which he just loved. And that's one of the opportunities that are available internships, which I would really highly recommend. All right, thank you again. Uh, so now we're going to go on to the more informal part of the session. So if anybody has questions at all, now is the time to ask them and uh, you can ask them in the chat or uh, just with your mic off. So whoever wants to start. Uh, 
All right, I did have a question in the chat that was addressed uh, by one of our faculty members, but I will read it out in case anybody can't see the chat for some reason. I know sometimes it can lag out on phones. So Kashal, pardon if I pronounced that wrong, did ask um, if there's any scope of international students participating in uh, co-curricular activities due to the fall term being online. Um, she's wondering about connecting with more people as the fall term is online and it would be difficult to have peer contacts. Uh, so I did talk with Kushal for a little bit and I did let her know or let them know uh, that I can send um, an ambassador email upon permission just for some added support and advice. And our faculty member did answer in the chat that there will be opportunities for international students to participate in co-curricular activities online. Uh, so there will be a club expo, as was mentioned within, uh, within our talks this morning. Uh, it will be early in the term. Uh, we'll have our FPA ambassadors program up and running as well. Uh, so uh, I'll be sending out actually an email abroad if anybody would like to sign up. You'll be receiving that within the next month or two. Uh, so if anybody in this chat would like to participate and speak in an event as our ambassadors have to this morning, uh, feel free to send me your application. All the information will be in the email. Um, and uh, thank you, Michelle, for starting off our question period. Does anybody else have any questions they'd like to ask? Oh, I've got another one. Okay. Oh, a few have come in now. So I'm going to start with Cindy Liu. They say, I am in global and international program, and I want to ask what kind of job that they could find after they graduate. Who would like to tackle this question from begins? I can uh, jump on and say a little bit about this. Um, I'm not going to say necessarily like, certain jobs. There's a plethora of anything. Um, you could be working internationally. You could be working with NGOs. Um, you could be working in certain levels of the government, um, the UN. There's, it's honestly whatever you want to, wherever you want to go with it and however you want to take it. Um, there's lots of opportunities with internships while you're in university um, to test out, kind of, is how I'd say it, um, those career fields. Um, the job market is always changing. Um, it's going to continue to change throughout your time in university and even after. Um, so I'm not going to necessarily share specific career or job titles, um, but I kind of hope that answered your question a bit. Yeah, thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Ida and Cindy. Uh, I have another question from Ali. How do I participate in an international internship? Is there anything I should do be doing in first year to prep for this? Madison? So I, I was on the ambassador for that stuff. And one of the things is, I don't know how they're going to do them this year, but they do class talks. And those are really informative. Um, but the best way, honestly, is to talk to your faculty administration. If you're interested at all, there's a one, usually it's Holly, Kajal, or there's, I think there might be a new woman now. They're incredibly supportive. Even if you just send them an email and say, hey, like, I'm interested in this, this area of the world. And could I do an internship? They will give you all the resources um, that you need. It's and to maintain a GPA, that's the biggest criteria actually, is uh, you need, I believe, a 7.0, um, if I'm not mistaken, so. I'd like to add on to what Madison was saying. Um, there's an international internship that's offered virtually now with COVID, they were sending out emails. So I would say, keep a lookout for emails uh, as well and, and go online at the Carleton website and type in internships and there's a huge array that will come up. And the same with like uh, job prospects and everything, There's alumni all the time and they actually post blocks of of what they're doing what they did what they graduated in yeah just to jump on uh, lisa pretty much covered it but your email will be your best friend make sure you have your notifications on in your inbox there'll be tons of information about everything so anything from internships or studying abroad um i know we i don't this isn't like COVID and everything but anyways um Carlton will do courses taught abroad. So anything like that, all of that info will come in your email. Turn those notifications on in your email. You don't want to miss anything. That's fantastic advice. Thank you so much. Uh, so our next question is from Besant. 
uh, is the workload going to be the same or different? So I know our ambassadors did have a little bit of an online experience. Uh, so based on the small amount of online experience you may or may not have, uh, what do you feel would be the answer to this question? Thank you. Yeah, so <clears throat> I'm, I'm currently taking like a couple courses right now. I'm taking three across the summer. And I would find that with like online summer school too, it's, it's primarily the same. The syllabus is all the same. Uh, professors tend to be more flexible on due dates and like with help, especially because everything's online. But more or less the syllabus and the workload is all the same and you're just getting more support and more support from the faculty and the professors to help you achieve the same goals as you would in person. So I would say it's a phenomenal experience and it's all the same. Fantastic. And uh, always remember that the professors are people too. Nothing to be scared of. Always reach out to them. They are amazing. All right, so our next question is from Tyler. When would professors usually start to send out the syllabi? You should probably expect syllabi to be ready kind of starting at the end of August and then early into September. Uh, oftentimes, if uh, the, uh, the people teaching the courses will post their uh, syllabi either on the, on the learning management system, CU-Learn, or on, or on some website that they will have created. So you should keep your eyes open around that time. Thank you, Andre. Uh, so I do have a question from Kashal that I think I can address. Um, they are wondering about the details for the Club Expo we mentioned. Uh, so the General Carleton Club Expo will be sent to your student email. Uh, so keep an eye on that. It will probably have something about Ravens in the title, as you are now all Ravens. <laughs> um, and then if we have a single, uh, a smaller FPA type one, uh, being the events assistant, I'll know about that and you will be on my list to receive information about that if there is one. But the main Carlton one will be sent out to your main email from Carlton uh, Communications. I hope that answered your question. <laughs> okay, so now from Drew, I'm in Papam, the uh, Papam program. What extracurricular activities would be nice to get into that is also related to the program? Uh, I, I guess that you're being addressed to Drew here. Um, so I know the, like I mentioned before, the Carleton Model United Nations Society is the second best in Canada. And like, I was part of it. And last year we went, I went to Washington. I also went to Harvard to compete representing Carleton. And the Model United Nations Society is heav heav heavily built on PAPM students. So that's a great opportunity you should look into. Um, I also sit as communications director on the Carleton Young Liberals. And I know there's a lot of Papam executives also on the conservative side too. So all like the, the political groups on campus is also a great place to start. Once you know where you belong, you can follow those political groups and get involved in more events and clubs like that. Fantastic. Uh, question from Tyler. Would classes be taking place over Zoom or Microsoft Teams? So uh, there is, there's no single platform that's used by everyone. So you'll find that some courses are through Zoom, some of them are to, through Teams. There's also something called Big Blue Button, which is used uh, by some faculty members. A relatively few use a technology called Kaltura, but those are kind of the areas and, and the, the, the syllabus will tell you which platform is gonna be used by the instructor. Perfect. Thank you, Andre. Uh, so from Irem, um, I'm also in the PAPM program. I was wondering how I can do a double major. Uh, to address that question, it's, I haven't seen anyone be able to do a double major in PAPM, especially because it's a 20 credit program and we have at least 12 of our credits based on specific PAPM courses you have to take and specific requirements. And then you have another 6.5 credits based on your specialization that leaves room for like four credits and four credits is the perfect amount for a minor. So if you're looking to like find another career pathway or find something else you want to study, I would encourage looking into minors. Um, I'm personally doing a, a minor in law. I know a lot of people do minor in business and a minor in different types of languages are also available at Carleton. So it's, I, I, to address that question in further detail, I would say you can't really do a double major specifically in Papam, but you, look, you can look towards doing a minor. 
I would like to add to that. Um, some Papam students and, and, and Beacon students are actually doing a double major and they don't know it, but it's in their credits. If you look at it, your your, what you specialize in is basically your other major. Like, yeah. It acts like that, like with your, with your credits. Yeah, that's fantastic. So specialization is in strategic public opinions. So I, I guess you can say that's like my double major right there, yeah. And if you ever have any questions about your credits, what kind of credits courses have or how you major, um, you can always uh, go on the Carleton website and look up, uh, this is very important, academic advisors, and they'll be able to go over what's called your audit, which is basically an intense report card and go over what classes you're taking and uh, what you will be graduating with. And it's best to go see them at least once a year. Uh, I used to do it every semester and it helped me a lot and it kept me on track for graduation. Okay, and next question is uh, Kashal again. So due to the time zones being different, how will I be able to contact my professors for study related queries? You, you can always send an email. That would be the easiest way to uh, reach people. And that doesn't depend on time zones. Uh, you know, please don't expect that your, your professors will be answering immediately, but, you know, feel free to send them emails and then that will be, uh, they, uh, they will certainly respond. There's also office hours that people will typically hold on all the classes uh, and those are outside of class time and they may be accessible to you. Again, they will be identified in the course syllabus and then you can set up a phone call or a Zoom call or just send emails uh, to, do, to address questions at that time. Can I just jump on to what the Dean was saying? Your email is your best friend. I know I said this earlier. Honestly, I've never used email as much as I have in university. All the information you need will be there. The best way to contact your prof is through email. Contacting peers and stuff, you can do it all through email. Um, definitely get the app on your phone, turn on your notifications, and get in the habit of checking your email daily. It, it's your lifesaver in university. Thank you so much. Okay, so I am going through the questions. Uh, we are seven minutes away from the end of the session, so I do apologize if we don't get to your question. Um, I had a question from Arian. I, again, I apologize if I mess up anybody's names, um, about doing international credits and how the Carleton uh, courses can uh, mesh with the international courses. And I just want to go back on my other note to say to ask your academic advisors um, to talk to them personally because you'll have a different course and workload than others. So it's uh, it's definitely more of a customized uh, thing. So answering it here might not make a lot of sense. So I hope that answered enough. And uh, Kushal, I registered and went through the orientation videos. Is that the final orientation? or will we have another orientation in September? Well, there certainly uh, is an orientation that's being prepared by, uh, by the university. So this is what you will get out of FPA and out of, of the faculty, and then your own program and the university will have additional information for you uh, closer to the first day of class. Thank you so much, Andre. Uh, Basant, he asked a question, he or she, pardon me, asked a question earlier about regarding workload, but the call did drop um, and I did notice that. So asking again, I'm just gonna recap. The workload is the same. The syllabus remains the same, uh, but there's definitely more support. Uh, so with it being online, your professors are there, email them, your email is your best friend, uh, keep with your, with your course work. Um, and there, some professors can be a little bit more lenient as well if you need a little bit more of an extension on a deadline. It is uh, based on the professor themselves, but uh, there is a lot of support. So from Matthew, is there a way to know which textbooks are used from last year? That's actually hard to, to do because basically the life of the, of, of the sub syllabus is kind of a year. So if you know somebody in the class that's, who took it last year, that might be good. But it's also a way of reaching out to other students in your program. But there's no really kind of easy official way of figuring out what textbooks were used last year. 
Perfect. Sometimes professors will give you uh, what additions can be used as well. So uh, just go by what the syllabus says. They are also your best friend. <laughs> okay, so uh, another question is, how can I get to know my professors who will be running over the specific courses for my online semesters? Well, you can certainly email them. Once you know who, the, who the, the instructors are, you can certainly email them and establish contact that way. As I think a number of the students have indicated, they really want to hear from you. This is not an issue of uh, pushing you back. They really want to hear from you. So I would say the first thing uh, would be potentially reaching out through email, but please understand you'll have classes, you'll see them, you'll see them in action either uh, on a recorded or on a live, uh, in a live setting. Another good way to make a connection with your profs is if your classes are being um, done in a live setting such as this or something similar, um, is asking questions in class. They'll remember your name um, in class, like in a physical class, they'll remember your name and your face kind of thing. On here, it'll be a little bit different, um, but ask those questions. That's a great bridge between academics and getting to know the prof as a person. Um, and then again, as the Dean was saying, emails. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you both. I appreciate this. Um, so somebody else can ask if they can choose to get a soft copy instead of a hard copy of online textbooks. Um, it's a matter of your preference completely. If you prefer to buy a book and highlight it, go for it. If you uh, want to buy a PDF or if there's a free PDF, because some textbooks are available for free. Um, then feel free to download that instead, as long as you've got the edition and the textbook that your professor has put in the syllabus. Um, we already had a question about office hours, so I'm going to keep going. We have 23 questions in two minutes. So again, I apologize if I don't get to your question. Uh, Basant asked, when will we get access to all societies and clubs that we can join? I, I would actually there will be a club expo that you can uh, that will provide you with all of that information and that as somebody said use your email your best friend uh, and you'll certainly get a notice of when that will happen yeah if i could add to that i would say go on instagram and facebook and, and see the clubs as well because they're all on there if you just type in carlton and you look and what they're following you'll see all the clubs and you can just email them see their events and everything as well perfect so I did have some questions about different courses and things to take. Uh, we won't touch on those because your academic advisors will have true perfect answers for you guys. Um, however, there is a question from Ananya and they're asking what exactly happens in a tutorial? And this will probably be our last question for the day. Anybody want to talk about their tutorial experiences? <laughs> well, it really depends. In some cases, what tutorials do is basically to give you practice questions and that sort of thing based on the material you'll have seen in class. In other situations, what tutorials do is they will develop specific areas for you to, uh, to have exchanges with the other students about. So they're more discussion groups about specific readings or about specific uh, themes that are explored in the course. So either it's kind of, think of it as either a problem session or a way to get some questions answered or more as discussion groups on materials that's related to the course. There may be other models too and the students may want to join in. Um, just to add, I found it was a really good transition from high school. If you think about a traditional high school class, it's very similar to that. Um, and it's not the prof, it's someone who's you know, very knowledgeable in the content but a little bit closer to our age as well. So yeah, it's really a good bridge, um, which is the point I think. Fantastic. All right, so that is ending our session for today. I do have a list of participants. Uh, so feel free to reach out to myself who sent you uh, the Zoom information. Um, and I'm sure our ambassadors will be happy to answer any questions that I can forward on to them um, as well later on. Um, I'd like to thank you all. There are many thanks in the comments as well for answering the questions. And thank you again, Andre, uh, for helping the session go smoothly. I hope you all have a successful academic year. Have a great day, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And thanks to our ambassadors for being there. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone.
Bye.